to the highway, and we went onto this narrow road. Um, I was wondering what he was doing down here, but he wasn't saying anything, and I wasn't. I figured, well, maybe we're lost, but so what? We'll come out somewhere. And we're going along, and there was a sharp curve in the road, and as we went around the curve, there were trees. There were a lot of p tall, tall trees on my side. I don't know about Bonnie's side of the road, but there was these men standing in the highway. And I wasn't too afraid when I saw them. They were standing there. And I thought, well, you know, it, there was several. There was, oh, I don't know. And they were just, you couldn't get a good look at them. But then I thought, well, you know, are they in a car and the car broken down? Or what are they doing there? And Barney, of course, had to stop. And then he he stops the car, and these men started to come up to the car. They 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 separated. They came up in two groups, and when they started to do that. I, I get real scared. Yeah, the, the, the car motor died. The car stalled. And, and when they started coming up, Barney tried to start the car. He tried to start it, and you know how a motor of a car would just turn over and turn over and won't fire? And, he tried to stop the car. <laughs> he did what? He tried to start the car yes. and it won't start. And the men are coming to us. And I think, well, I can't get away from this. I can, if I get the car door open, I can run in the woods and hide. And I'm thinking it. And I just put my hand on the car door and open it. And just, and the men come up and they opened it for me. And they opened the car door and this this not very big man and this one two three next to me and then this two men behind them. I didn't hear that. Two men this there's a car door, and there's one, two, three men, yeah. and then there's one, two more behind them. Yes. And one man puts his hand out, I don't know what happened. You can remember everything now. What do these men look like? Could you see their faces? No. How were they dressed? I like somehow or other. Did they have them in a uniform or were they in ordinary clothes? No, I like a uniform.
uniform. Does it resemble any uniform you know? I couldn't say. There's a couple of men behind me, and then there's Barney, and he... <laughs> there's a man on each side of him, and my eyes are open. My body's still asleep. He's walking, and he's asleep. And... Thank you. And I'm going to get mad. And they go, who the heck are these characters and what do they think they're doing? And so I turn around and I say, Barney, wake up. Barney, why don't you wake up? And he doesn't pay any attention. He keeps walking. And I keep going a little bit further. And I turn around and I say his name again. Body, wake up. And he doesn't pay any attention. And then the man who's walking beside me here says, Oh, is his name Barney? And I turned around and I looked at this man and I figured it's none of his business. So I didn't speak to him. Did we keep walking? And I try to wake Barney up again. He said, Barney, Barney, wake up. And he doesn't. So the man said, he asked me again, he said, is Barney his name? Then I would ask him, so that he says, he says, don't be afraid. You don't have any reason to be afraid. We're not going to harm you. But we just want to do some tests. And when the tests are over with, we'll take you and body back and put you in your car and you'll be on your way back home in no time. And so I mean he was he was sort of reassuring in a way, but I wasn't, can't say that I trusted what he said. And I wasn't sure what was going to happen, and we kept walking, and the body was still asleep, and then... You mean he was walking in sleep? Yeah, mm. he was just like sleepwalking. These men spoke good English? Uh, only one spoke, the one who was on my left. And he said, and then he was more or less... He had an accent. He, he had sort of a foreign accent. But he was very, you know, business-like. And so then we kept walking and we came to And there was a case of the clearing, and there was. Oh, I wish it was lighter so I could get a better picture of huh? that. There was a ramp and a door. There was a... The object was on the ground. The object was on the ground? Yeah. 
I think it was the same when I was watching in the sky. And it was, and there were trees, and there was a path, and there was this clearing. And this object just, oh, the clearing I could see just about filled up, filled up the clearing. And they're taking me up to the object. Now, I don't want to go on it. I don't want to, I don't know what's going to happen if I go on it. I don't want to go. And I go up the ramp. And I go inside. And there's a corridor to the left. We go up the corridor. And there's a room, and they start to take me in the room. Some of the men come in the room with this man who speaks English and me. They stay for a minute. I don't know who they are. I guess maybe they're the crew. But they only stay for a minute. And the man who speaks English, is there, and another man comes in. I haven't seen him before. I think he's a doctor. They, they came in the door, and I think he's got, I don't know how our nervous system is, but I hope that we'll never have nerve enough to go around kidnapping people right off the highways, like he's done. And I, oh, he tells me to take off my dress, and he used to tell me to take off my dress and then before I have a, even have a chance hardly to stand up to do it, the examiner, it had, my dress has a zipper down the back. Down the back? Yeah, it has a zipper down the back. And the examiner unzips my dress. It goes way down to my waist, the zipper does. And so I slept my dress off as so I don't have my my dress or my shoes on. And there's a uh, next over away the stool and then there's in the sort of in the middle of the room is a t table. Some kind of a table. It's not up very high, about the same height as a desk. So, uh, I lie down on the table, on my back, and he brings over this, uh, uh, oh, how can I describe it? They're like needles. There's a whole cluster of needles, and each needle has a wire running from it. So then they roll me over on my back. And the examiner has a long needle in his hand. And I see the needle. And it, it's it's bigger than any needle I've ever seen. And I asked him what he's going to do with it. And he said, just a simple test to hold to me. And I asked him what. And he said he just wants to put it in my navel. It's just a simple test. And 
I don't know. It won't hurt. Don't do it. Don't do it. And even though it won't hurt. And he takes a needle into my nail. And spit it. <laughs> And I'm crying, and I tell her it's hurting, it's hurting, it's hurting, take it out. And, and, and then the leader, he goes over, and he puts his hand, runs his hand in front of my eyes. And he says, I'll be all right. I won't feel it. Oh. And all the pain goes away. Dad. Dad. But I still, I still, the pain goes away, but I'm still sore from where they put that, these, I don't know why they put that long deep into my navel. <laughs> I tried to tell them it was, they shouldn't do it. But, Did they make any sexual advances to you? No. They didn't. No. I asked the leader, I said, why did he stick the needle, why did they stick the needle in my navel? And he said it was a pregnancy test. And I said, well, I don't know what they expected, but that was no pregnancy test here. And he didn't say any more. So, the... Examiner was help. He helped me get up off the table, and I swung around. And my sh he gave me my shoes, and I put those on and got down on the floor. And my dress was there. And I put my dress on. And he, I was, he, I was going to zip it up, and he t took a hold of the zipper at the top and pulled it up. And then, oh, I said, I can go now. I can go back to the car. And he said, Barney isn't ready yet. And so then I began to get worried, and I kept, I asked him why it was taking so long with Barney. And he said, well, they were doing a few more tests with him, but he'd be right along in a minute. And uh, the uh, there was a cabinet there, and the exact the, the doctor, the examiner. I mean, it, he had gone out of the room. There was just the, the leader and me there. So there was a doctor there, you say? I, and the man who did the examining, he did the testing, and he left. And so there was just the leader and me. And so uh, I felt, I mean, I was grateful to him because he had stopped my pain. And, and now I wasn't afraid at all. And so I started talking with the leader. And I said to him that this had been 
quite an experience. It was unbelievable that no one would ever, ever believe me and that most people didn't even know he was alive and that what I needed was some proof that this had really happened. So he laughed and he said, well, what kind of proof did I want? What would I like? And I said, well, if he could give me something to take back with me, then people would believe it. And so he told me to look around and maybe I could find something I would like to take. And I did. And there wasn't much around, but on the cabinet, there was a book, a, a, a fairly big book. So I, uh, I, I put my hand on the book and I said, could I have this? And the, the leader laughed, and he asked me if I thought I could read it. And I told him, no, I laughed too. I said, no. But I wasn't taking it to read that this was going to be my proof that this had happened. That... that this is my proof. And so he said that I could, ha I could have the book if I wanted it. And I picked it up and I was delighted. I mean, this was, this was one, this was uh, more than I had ever hoped for. He went over across the room to the head of the table and there was, he, he did something. He opened up, a, it wasn't like a drawer. He sort of did something in, in the metal of the wall. There was an opening and he pulled down a map. And he asked me, had I ever seen a map like this before? And I walked across the room, and I leaned against the table, and I looked at it. And it was a map of, it was an oblong map. And he said that, the heavy lines were trade routes. And then the other lines, the other lines, the, the, the solid lines were places they went occasionally. And he said that The broken lines were expeditions. So I asked him where he, what, where was his home port? And he said, where's the, where are you? on this map and 
I looked and I laughed and I said, I don't know. So he said, well then, if you don't know where you are, there wouldn't be any point of my telling you where I am. And he put the map, he, the, he, the map rolled up and he put it back in the space in the wall and closed it. And I felt very stupid because I didn't know where the earth was on the map. And I asked him, well, could he show me? Well, could he open up the map again and show me where the earth was? And he just laughed. And then I still, I got the book. I still got the book. I'm carrying the book. I got it in my eyes. It's a big book. I don't, and so I went back to the cabinet and put the book down and started to look through it again. And there was all of a sudden this noise out in the hall. And some of the other men come in and with them is the examiner. And they're quite excited. So I asked the leader, I said, what's the matter? Did, did something happen to Barney? What's, what is that? Well, it's something to do with Barney. And the, the examiner has me, op has me open my mouth and he starts checking my teeth and they're tugging at them. And I asked him, what are they trying to do? What were they doing at them? They were try pulling, tugging at tugging my teeth. Tugging at them, yes. Yes. And the, the examiner said that they were very, he was very excited. And he said that, <laughs> <laughs> he, he said that they couldn't figure it out. Barney's teeth came out and I didn't. <laughs> and I, I was really laughing. And <laughs> I said that Barney had dentures and I didn't. And that's why his teeth would come out. <laughs> and they... So then they asked me what were dentures, and I said that people, as they got older, washed their teeth. For, they had to go to the dentist and have their teeth extracted, and they put in dentures, or a person sometimes and Barney had to have dentures because he had he injured he had a mouth injury of some sort and he had to have his teeth extracted all these things you ask me I don't know I'm a very limited person when it when talking trying to talk with you but there are other people in this country who are not like me, that they would be most happy to talk with him, that they could answer all his questions. And maybe if he could come back, if we could make arrangements for a meeting, I could, maybe I could, if he gave me time enough, somehow I could find these people and I could arrange for him to meet them and 
it would have to be done so there'd be no danger involved. I, I wouldn't want him to be exposed to any danger. That I don't know how I could do it. I don't know how I could. I'd work it out somehow. But if he if he could come. I want him to come back. I want him to... The... And he's just looking at me. And I... Will you come back? Can we make... Can, can we work out something? And then his answers, his questions would all have answers and... And... Other people could get the things that all the things I'd like to know too. And he says, "I don't know. I don't know. It, it it's not my decision to make." So I said, "Well, could you discuss it with the person who does have the decision to make?" And he said, yes. And I said, well, if you do decide to come back, I mean, if it can be worked out, I would need time. I, I It would take some time. I mean, I just couldn't go out on the spur of the moment and round up people to meet with you. It, it would have to be people that we knew would be all right and... and would have the background and all, and and I wouldn't even know where to meet him, or or and he la he said, "Don't worry. If we decide to come back, we'll be able to find you all right." But I said, "But I don't live around here. I don't live in this area." And he said, we'll find you. And I said, how? How will you find me? Out of millions of people. And he said, we will. We always do find those we want to. And I said, well, now what do you mean by that remark? And he just laughed. And then... Barney's coming. They're bringing Barney out of... I hear, the, I hear the men out in the corridor. And I said, Barney's coming. And he said, yes, you can go back to the car now. And I got the book. And Barney's coming out. And Barney's eyes are still shut. Good heavens. <laughs> He's missed an awful lot. I wonder if he made him keep his eyes shut or if he's scared. And so, they, uh, anyway, uh, now it's time to go back to the car, and the leader said, come on, we'll walk back to the car with you. And I said, all right. I said, but I do wish, I wish I knew if you were going to come back. And he said, well, we'll see. And, we're out into the corridor. Barney's behind me. With his eyes shut. There's a man on each side of him. And I'm starting, I'm all ready to go down the ramp when some of the other men, not, not the leader, but some of the other men are talking. I don't know what they're saying. But they're very excited. And, and the leader is saying, he's, he's saying something. And they're quite, they're, 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 they don't, they're undecided about something. And then, oh, 
Selena comes over and takes my book. And I said, oh, I'm furious. I said, you promised me I could have the book. You gave me a word you, I could have it. And he said, I know it. He said, but the others object. They don't want you to have it. And I said, but this is my proof. If you take the book away from me, I'll have no proof that this has happened. And he said, that's the whole point. They don't want you to know it's happened. They want you to forget all about it. And that's why I'm taking the book. I, I won't forget about it. You, you can take the book, but you never, never, never can make me forget about it. Because I'll remember it's the last thing I ever do. <laughs> but I want the book. He won't give it to me. And he says, he laughs. He, he says, maybe you will remember. I don't know. I hope you do. But maybe you will. But it won't do you any good if you do. Because Bonnie won't. Bonnie won't remember one single thing. And not only that, if he should remember anything at all, he's going to remember it differently from you. And all you got to do is get each other so confused you won't know what's going on. If you do remember, it'd be better if you forgot it anyway. And I say, why? But you try to threaten me? Because you can't scare me. Because I won't forget it. I'll remember it somehow. So then he said, all right, now, come on, let's go back to the car. We'll go back to the, we'll take you back to the car. And, um, I've been standing there on the side of the ramp talking to him. And, I'm not so mad now. And they've taken Barney ahead while we were talking. So he, the other men are going ahead. And he said, he said, you know, he said, I, I had no objections to you having the book. But the others object. And they have as much right to make this decision as I do. So I said, all right, I won't be mad at you. But uh, it is the most, I wish I could be able to have some proof of this. Because it's the most unbelievable thing that's ever happened. <laughs> 